Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with PremiumBeat.com and in this tutorial we're going to explore how we can make 360 videos look better. We'll be looking at camera shooting techniques, some alternative 360 ideas, and some effects that can help increase detail. Primarily this tutorial is focused on improving the look of consumer 360 cameras, but these tips can also be beneficial for professional 360 productions. So let's just jump into it. We're going to start with bitrate. Most consumer 360 cameras film around 50 to 60 megabits per second, which is considered a fairly low bitrate for recording 4K footage, as it can really mush and compress fine detail. But it's actually much worse for 360 footage, because that bitrate is for the entire 360 sphere. So if we look at the entire 360 shot zoomed out, it doesn't look too bad. But once we zoom in and view the perspective that it will be played back at, the imperfections really get magnified. And on top of that, YouTube is also going to compress your 360 video again after you upload it. Not a lot can be done to alter the bitrate in consumer 360 cameras, but I do have two tips that can help. The first is to stitch the footage yourself in a stitching program or using After Effects, instead of using the software that comes with your consumer 360 camera. The reason for this is not only will you have more control on the stitching, but you'll also be able to control the export bitrate for your final video. Although increasing this won't gain you any additional detail, but you can minimize the detail that is otherwise lost during that process. For example, the Samsung Gear 360 records at 60 megabits per second. However, if you use the default stitching software that comes with that camera, it's actually going to export your stitched video at 50 megabits per second. So you're unnecessarily losing a little bit of detail during that process. By using a dedicated program like AutoPano Video Pro or stitching in After Effects, you can control that exported bitrate so that it is at or above the level you filmed at. The second tip that will help with bitrate is to only film stationary on a tripod or monopod. Lots of movement and low bit rates never mix well and will really bring out the compression artifacts. You'll put a lot less visual strain on the bit rate if the camera is locked down. Lots of high speed movement with these cameras may sound cool, but if you can't see what's going on because of the compression, that's probably not a great idea. If your shot requires a lot of movement, you'd be better suited buying or renting a more professional 360 camera. That being said, even those cameras won't protect you from the compression YouTube will still add when it's published online. So that's something to always consider when you're filming in 360. However, let's transition to the next 360 tip that will drastically improve the quality of your consumer 360 camera and will even allow you to use it on professional projects. And that's using 360 photos instead of 360 video. It may seem obvious, but the 360 photo quality from these cameras is significantly better than the video quality. And the photos will usually be 8K resolution or higher. What this means is you're going to gain a significant jump in image detail. Here's a direct comparison. This shot is of a 4K video from the Gear 360, and now here's an 8K photo from the Gear 360. The photo has a lot more fine detail and color saturation. This is a great method for virtual tour videos or client videos where movement at the location isn't a major factor. The next two tips are VR effects that are located both in After Effects and Premiere Pro. The first is using the VR sharpen effect to bring a bit more detail back into the footage. This sharpen effect was made specifically for use with 360 footage in the equirectangular format. The trick is to be subtle with it, I recommend a value between 8 and 16, it won't drastically improve your footage, but it can help add a little more bite to the image. The next VR effect I recommend is the VR color gradients effect. You can use this effect to emulate colored gels or filters seamlessly on your 360 footage. Just set the point value to 2 and then place one at the top of your footage and another at the bottom. Then experiment with various blending modes and opacity levels. Alright guys, hopefully you learned some tips for improving your 360 video. Make sure y'all check out the Premium Beat blog. Every week they post new tutorials and filmmaking content just like this. And they have lots of freebies on there as well. This has been Charles Jager for PremiumBeat.com. Thanks for watching.